I've been working recently over the last six weeks following a stint last year, um, temporary assignment last year as a carer um, for people with dementia. And um, at the moment I'm working uh, with two particular clients on a part-time basis, doing a few shifts with this one and a few shifts with, uh, with that one. And um, it's very interesting, this work, because it's really highlighting what it is that makes us an individual. There are various aspects of this that, that are very pertinent to this work that I'm doing. And um, it strikes me that one of the really, but possibly the most important aspect that makes us an individual that uh, delineates our individuality in the world and signifies our individuality in the world and therefore in a dementia care setting um, signifies and requires the connection the respectful connection with the individual um, in the light of and in spite of the um the condition the medical condition what's happening with the brain and the body in terms of um alzheimer's and um vascular dementia and this this facet of being an individual possibly the key signifier of it is a matter of choice it's about choice for example if i say to a client would you like a cup of tea or would you like a cup of coffee? If their uh, condition and the progression of their illness um, permits them to make a choice or to at least express a preference for tea or coffee, I will follow that. If I ask and there's no response at all, just no response possibly not even any eye contact um or if i ask and i just get somebody uh repeating tea coffee tea coffee tea coffee like this i can tell that there well there's no apparent choice going on there but for as long as my question would you like a cup of tea or would you like a cup of coffee is responded to with a choice that person is still there. They're still there. It's the fact that we choose. And that boiling back down into uh, a Buddhist arena is about wanting and not wanting, craving and aversion. I crave tea. I have an aversion to coffee at this time. So I choose tea. So our choices, when we choose something, when something comes up and we have a range of options for how to respond to it or how to, um, yeah, how to, yeah, respond to something. We've got option A, usually, or option B. There's usually two options. I either do this or I do that. And there is, of course, a third option, which is I do neither. I do nothing. And that in itself is a choice. The choice to do nothing, the choice to not act is still a choice. And every choice we take, be it A, B or zero, in the case of uh, not choosing, the choice to not choose, the choice to not act, every action has consequences. Every choice we take kind of, engenders some fluctuation in the field it sends out some ripples and i mean even perhaps the most interesting uh choice zero the choice to not do anything at all that's really interesting because it is still sending out ripples and that would be a, a choice of mind. If we've got body, speech and mind, all our actions are the result of choices made 
in body, speech, and mind. And choice zero, the choice to not do anything, is, as I say, perhaps the most interesting of all, because it is still sending out ripples, but they're, they're kind of negative. I don't mean negative as in bad. I mean negative as in kind of not really there. But anyway, that's perhaps that's for another film. It's our choices that make us what we are and that keep us um, kind of enmeshed in samsara because by choosing this action, whatever it is, we are engendering consequences. The choice being the cause and the consequences being the effect. And those ripples that we send out onto the field will coalesce in various ways, some of which we can predict, some of which we can't predict, some of which we don't even recognize when they become, when they sort of come back, so to speak, when that wave form that is formed kind of comes back at us and we don't might not even recognize it as having anything to do with that choice we took then. It's our choices that make us a seemingly separate individual. And that's why in the case of a dementia care setting, it's so important you know, for the dignity of the individual. I mean, it doesn't perhaps make much difference whether the person has a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, but they chose tea, so they will get tea. Okay, that's, that's it. For as long as they can choose, they will get what they've asked for, and rightly so. So if it is our choices that keep us kind of enmeshed in the um, seemingly separate individual state of samsara and are engendering endless consequences and effects, as I say, some of which we might not even recognize, let alone be able to predict. What's the solution? If what we're going for is um, Advaita, non-duality, non-separation, oneness, wholeness is the answer so it's a stupid rhetorical question to not choose anything at all well of course not of course it's not you cannot live without taking choices everything you do is a choice to do everything you can't live you can't just like zombify yourself and uh <laughs> kind of choose to not do anything, to not take any choices at all in order to try to um, escape your uh, individuality, your ego. It's not the solution. The solution is to recognize the, uh, well, I think at this stage, the solution is to recognize the utter, incomparable power of choice that we have. And to recognize the extraordinary effects that taking choices of body, speech, and mind have for us, for those around us, for those further afield, and ultimately for the whole of existence. Now, this choice, this power of choice, is, I believe, one of the freedoms and advantages that the Buddhists talk about. That having incarnated as human, uh, we are um, possessed of certain freedoms and advantages that other um, stages of being don't have. The animals don't have it. Hungry ghosts don't have it. The beings in the hell realm don't have it. Um, the Asuras don't have it. The gods don't have it. Only we have it. And it is, it is distinct to the human condition to have this capacity and this power for choice. So ongoingly and progressively, the key is to measure and sift with the greatest care we can at the time of choosing what it is we are choosing. And to really, really, yeah, examine and sift 
our choices in order that um, what we are um, enacting through our choice, enacting with body, speech and mind through our choice is as beneficial to the greatest number of beings as is possibly possible, All right? And that sounds like a really, really tall order and it is a tall order. Um, and that's why I, as ever, recommend daily practice, daily silent meditation practice. Just sit in silence with your breath and your mind. Bring your body to stillness and just sit with your mind and let the silt settle in the pond. And when thoughts and impressions and feelings come, the pond gets a bit stirred up, come back to your breath, let it settle, let it settle, let it settle. And if you really, really want to um, kind of boot yourself into this meditative paradigm, practice mantra japa, the repetition of um, mantra. And uh, my recommendation would be to choose a very simple, wholesome mantra like Om Mani Padme Hong Kri or the mantra of Green Tara, Om Tare Tutare Duri Soha. Um, because those are um, what I refer to as broad, broad spectrum mantras that are just really, really good for every aspect of being. The power to choose is what makes us the individual. So if we want to transcend being an individual, the answer is not to not choose because even not choosing is a choice. The answer is to choose progressively, ongoingly, very, very carefully. Right, I'm going to leave that there. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support the work I do on this channel, there are links in the description box for that. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye.